Hi, David Clapp here from Landscape. I'm just going to do a follow-up from Tim's article on ICC profiles and just have a look at some uh, aspects of photography and uh, also Lightroom as to why colours go out of gamut and uh, look at how to combat these using the tools that we have. The first thing I wanted to do before looking at this particular image, which has got a very strong magentas in it, is have a look at colour spaces. And one of the things you can do is utilise your uh, software to be able to identify different colour spaces and their sizes. If you have a look at this here, which is the Spider Elite profiling software that I've been using, if you go to, I think it's the shortcut section at the bottom, you get something called Spider Proof. Um, you may well end up with a screen like this. It's the screen that's at the end of the profiling. If you go to uh, Next, you get this rather wonderful diagram showing you colour spaces. And if you have a look at this, if I go on to sRGB, that this triangle shows you the width of the sRGB colour space. If you go to Adobe RGB, look, it's much bigger. And then if I click on my particular Mac screen, which I profiled, you can see that it has a, a different colour space and available colours or colours available rather than Adobe RGB does. Now I've also got the one of my, I think it's my my NEC monitor that I use for my PC and you can see that's almost the same as the Adobe RGB. I'll just turn the, uh, the Mac one off and you can see that a bit clearer. So there's a wonderful little tool inside Utilities on the Mac for those of you who are using a Mac called Color Sync Utility, and this is a 3D way, uh, very impressive by the way, of uh, showing color spaces. And what you can do is, is look at one color space and place it inside the other. So if you press, uh, I've got Adobe RGB open at the moment, if I click on sRGB with the shift key down, I can now compare one inside the other, showing you the, uh, the sRGB one trapped then inside the Adobe RGB to show you the available width of colors. So when it comes to uh, Lightroom, one of the biggest problems is, is ascertaining what this histogram is representing. You may have been in a state of confusion like I have been at various points when converting pictures from here and bringing them into Photoshop. Photoshop, of course, if you go into Photoshop and have a look at the, where is it, edit um, color settings. Make sure that your working color space is set to Adobe RGB, and this will then mean that the image that you bring in will hopefully match the color space that you set. So, with this one, what I'm going to do is, is first thing have a look at two ways of soft proofing a picture once in Lightroom and also in Photoshop as well. Now in here, the biggest issue is that this histogram seems to represent a very wide color gamut because you can see there's no clipping in the shadows end, there's no clipping in the highlights end either. But when I convert this image, and we'll just do it, export, and we'll convert it into, you can see there it's Adobe RGB, that's the color space I'm going to set, 16-bit. Bring it into Photoshop. When we bring it in, the biggest problem is, is that for some bizarre reason now, have a look, the greens are clipped out. Uh, many colours can be clipped out depending on what it is you're actually converting. Sunsets in particular will have a, a major problem with this as well. Oranges and reds clip out very easily. But in this situation the greens clipped and this is to do with the magenta that you can see in these flowers. So why is it that this histogram represents one thing and yet Photoshop represents another. Well, you can soft proof and if I press S on the keyboard up pops this box here and it says uh, profile so I can choose my profiles and as it happens to be set at the moment on sRGB you can see there that the highlights are clipped and the shadows are clipped as well but this is a saturation issue not a tonal issue because as you can see there are no darks in my image at all there are just uh, lights, blues, white and of course this very strong colour. So if I set this to Adobe RGB, same problem again, you can still see that the green channel is having problems being clipped. But if I now go to Pro Photo, now nothing's clipped, and that's a very wide colour space indeed. So if I now press S and stop this being soft proof to have a look again, and the histogram changes again. Now this is because 
Lightroom uses a very wide color gamut and it uses something called Melissa RGB. I didn't know this until I started researching into this and it turns out that this color space is very similar to Prophoto and this is what Lightroom is representing with its histogram. So it's very important if you're going to convert images to sRGB at the start but let's say with uh, Adobe RGB and you have strong colors like this or poppies or sunsets or things like this that you have a look at what it's going to end up at in Adobe RGB. So by pressing S on the keyboard, this works in Lightroom 4 and 5, you can now choose Adobe RGB. So what do you do? Well, colors are clipped, they're out of gamut, and uh, we can press this little computer symbol at the top and we can see exactly where this problem is. And if I zoom in, there are my out of gamut colors. They're not that out of gamut, but it's very easy to misconstrue that this histogram represents um, the shadows being clipped, but in this case it's actually the colors are out of gamut. Now if you go to HSL on this section of the uh, Lightroom menus, click on this wonderful little tool here and then make sure you click to saturation. If you then go on to where the blue is, click hold, left click that is, and then pull down, you can see that I'm reducing the saturation of my magentas. Now I've got to just pull it down a bit, I don't want to worry too greatly about the fact that the warning is on but I want to look at my histogram, remember this is simulating Adobe RGB so this is now within gamut. So let's have a look at my picture, I'll turn this tool off, zoom out and now everything's looking a little bit on the washed outside I have to say. I've certainly lost the vibrancy of my magentas and that was only occurring if you notice to the top of the flowers up here. So what we'll do First, I'm going to reset this saturation and we're going to bring this image into Photoshop and start again using Photoshop's tools and also an adjustment layer with which we can use to reduce the out of gamut colors. So here's the image inside Photoshop and as you can see, as predicted, the green channel is completely clipped out in the shadows end caused by the excessive saturation of the magenta. Now, what I can do is is I could actually take a hue saturation layer, click on magentas and now target the magenta as a colour. This is a very good way, you might have seen then that that jump, but it's a very good way of making sure that you have the right colour targeted for a saturation reduction. So if I now grab the saturation slider, watch the histogram in the top left, as you can see, just a small drop of about minus eight has brought this into line within the Adobe RGB color space. So now I can right click and flatten this. And I now know that if I wanted to save this file for my archive, that I'm within the color space as it is. But let's say you wanted to take this picture and convert this to sRGB. Well, the biggest problem is is what does this now look like in the sRGB color space? Can we soft proof in the same way? Well, kind of. If you go to view and go to proof setup and click on custom, you can now choose the device to simulate, as it says here, and put that on sRGB. Press OK. And now if we have a look at the view gamut warning, you can now see, we zoom in, that again, things are very slightly out of gamut. So, one of the big problems with this is when doing this with sunsets or similar is that all the magentas that you see are not out of gamma, it's just this area that's actually grey that's causing the problem. So, we can use the hue saturation slider again and the fact that it's a, a layer mask to target just these areas and this is what's uh, really quite clever. Go to master, go to magentas. We'll click on the grey. Now it's not going to sample grey, it's just sampling the colours underneath. This is just a, a gamut warning. Click on the magentas again. We can desaturate this time, pull it back. And there we go, we've pretty much got everything. Uh, minus 13. But of course it's desaturated the entire image. If we pull out, and I'll toggle this on and off, we can now see that we're losing a lot of saturation there over the entire flowers. So, what you do, click on the layer mask. Command of Backspace fills it with black. This is the background colour you can see here. If it isn't, then just press D on the keyboard and that will reset your colour picker to black and white. Click on the uh, layer mask. Command Backspace, Control Backspace on a PC 
It's a bit like doing a layer layer mask hide all, if you like. It's filling it with a hidden layer mask. It's filling it, the, the mask in with black. Choose the brush tool. And zoom into 100%. And now what we can do is we can target our area by painting white into our layer mask. And as we paint over, you can see it's actually removing the grey gamut warning because now I'm bringing all the flowers within gamut except I'm doing it selectively where I want to do this so whenever you're doing things like poppies or other things that have a very strong gamut you may find that only some of them are out of gamut and other ones are not so this is a very very good way of making sure that you don't cause immense amounts of desaturation to the entire image and paint it on exactly where you want it so simply turning it on and off I'll zoom in very slightly so you can see slightly better. That's out of gamut. That's in gamut for sRGB. So now you are ready to convert your archive image into an sRGB web image that will display, as people like to say, exactly as I captured it. Okay, so David Clapp for On Landscape, gamut warnings.